Before going further, let's take a few minutes to improve the design. And let's start with the top, with the elements that we just added. And we'll switch off visual helpers so that we can really see the page, what we are doing. And let's do the logo. Maybe change the font first. We'll use Google Fonts. At I like Lato or Lato a lot. It's a very useful font. And we can select it here. And make it larger. A bit of spacing. Yeah, looks quite nice, right? Change the color, a bit more gray. A bit bigger, maybe like this. Okay. And here we need a bit of uh, margin on the right side. I use shift and up key to go to 10. Maybe 20 and also on the top shift up. Okay, that looks good, right? Nice and balanced. I'm not so happy with uh, spacing. Let's just try it without natural okay and then let's go to the menu and styling is happens on the links and for this we will um, create a CSS rule that will target all the links in uh, in the navigation bar And let's set the font. Let's use Lato here as well. And change the color. To gray. And we also have a hover state. Which at the moment is not styled. But let's do it. So we, again we will add all the links in A. But here we will also use hover let's change the color a bit darker maybe something like that and we also have active state so let's again create the rule and we say okay for now for links with class active and we can change the color make it more dark maybe black let's do it almost black and then for the regular ones make it a bit more gray And it would be good if the logo and the menu are somehow aligned. So we could do it with margin like we did here, but uh, I have another idea. Let's go back to the logo and let's put margin to zero or just remove it. Okay. And now let's press command G to open our grid editor and we see okay this this the first row is 100 pixels uh, high and now if we go to justify uh, elements to using flex properties let's try let's put it in the middle and then let's go to the menu 
and do the same there. And now they are nicely adjusted uh, on the center of the cell. And if we um, decrease the width, we, we keep this alignment in place. Maybe 80 pixels should be enough. Okay, the top part looks good. So now let's change the, the font on the page. We can use uh, Georgia. Um, for most of it. And then let's do the title. First go to inline editing mode. So we will press shift enter here to insert a line break. And then it's uh, the title is selected but the visual helpers are off to make it easier to see what we are doing. And let's add a bit more interesting font for, for the title. April Fat Face. And let's make it bigger. So because the row, row uh, height is set to auto, then whatever we do here, the grid will also resize according to the size of the content. So let's do something. What look, would look the nice? The size is okay. But uh, the row size, the column size is a bit small, maybe this looks better, right? And again, it's easy to play with grid. Like, I like the fact that the, the heading fits in, but I think the, the lines here are too big, so it makes it harder to read. So what can we do? And again, grid to the rescue. We can insert a new column here, and we can say Let's give it a fraction value. And then we can uh, put the title, let's say title here. We will make it a bit more, four. And now the quote is too narrow, so let's increase that to two. make this one a bit more so something like that uh, we can also decrease the the spacing on both sides Okay, I think it looks good. So that's really the magic of CSS Grid. It's so easy to play around with these different like sizes and without thinking of margins and paddings and how things will fit correctly together. Um, it really opens up a lot of creative freedom, freedom to be creative. And I think we miss that or in web development a lot because creativity you know for creativity we always paid a high price in complexity but with CSS grid that's not the case um, okay one more thing to do let's close this and plus Let's insert paragraph with M percent. And again, hold command to insert it in the grid. And I'll switch back on the, the visual helpers. 
So now it's very small. We don't need it so small. We need it to be big. So let's try with really big size. And we can actually place it up here and make it even bigger. And we don't want it to like resize our columns, so we we can just give it uh, enough space. Okay, and then go to color and we make it transparent. Let's like use black, but transparent. And also now it's uh, on the top and we can use if, if things overlap in grid, we can use uh, Z-index to put it at the right place. We could also move it around here, so let's, let's do that. We have to clear this up. So now things are on top of it. Let's also try something. Edit grid and make space on top a bit different, a bigger, so that our um, decorating elements kind of pops out a bit more. Okay. And deselect. And looks okay, right? I'm quite happy with the result. Uh, the only thing I notice is the space here is smaller than the space down here. So let's see why. It might have to do with our decoration. So let's push it down. Yes, because it uh, fell into this uh, row with auto height and the top rows are all fixed height, so then this row got enlarged in order to fit in this element. But now we actually, it, we gave it more place here in the background, so that it doesn't stretch the things, the columns and rows of our grid. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Personally, I'm quite happy with what we did. It was fun to create, uh, but we are not finished yet, because now we have to make sure that our layout works fine on different divide sizes. And we can see that this is not the case at the moment.